really looking forward to waving these drivers off. Uh, they've been here all afternoon, baking in the sun. I don't think that gets uh, stated enough. It's 71 degrees here in uh, Winchester, New Hampshire. They've been in the aluminum stands all afternoon. The sun's been beating down strong, and they're ready to see a great race. Well, let's take a look at the starting lineup of how they will go to post here today for the Duel at the Dog 200 presented by JDB Productions. Justin Bonsignor, our four-time winner here at this racetrack. He is on the pole position. He'll line up alongside Ronnie Silk atop the championship point standings and the winner from New Smyrna. Tyler Ripkema and Doug Kobe, the 2015 winner here at Adnock, will make up row two. And Matt Hirschman will start in fifth. Austin Beers, he's also tied at the top of the standings, but he won last time out at Richmond Raceway. He'll start ninth. Craig Lutz will be tenth. Anthony Nosella and John McKennedy, your top 12. Matt Kimball, we saw the problems that he had in practice earlier today, or qualifying, that is. And that number 43, one of the local favorites, slated to start 16th today, along with Brian Roby, a former New Hampshire state track champion here at this racetrack. Andrew Krause, he'll start 21st tonight in the 24 car. Dave Zapienza will roll off from the 25th position, having a good start to his season and rounding out the field here today. Corey Plummer and Tim Conley for the starting lineup for today's event. The race analysis for today, 200 laps. There will be no tires that the teams can change on pit road, and so they'll have to conserve their equipment throughout this 50-mile event. With the weather here today in Winchester, New Hampshire, 69 degrees, partly cloudy, and a breezy day and about eight mile per hour wind gracing the Manadnock Speedway. Of a turn number four, Justin Bonsignor and Ronnie Silk will be pacing the field. This is the moment that those who are here in Winchester, New Hampshire have been waiting for all afternoon. These drivers, 29 strong, about ready to do battle for 200 laps. Someone will be the champion of the Duel of the Dog, and it's time to salute these drivers, starting with the turn number three grandstands. Ladies and gentlemen, on your feet, find your favorite driver. Get ready to salute these drivers as they get ready to do battle. Drivers, we salute you. It's a pause or a moment for them to pause and take a quick look to the grandstands for the final time to watch those who will be cheering them on as they have to laser focus at this tight quarter mile for the next 200 laps, Joe. Justin Bonsignor looking for three in a row here at Manadnock Speedway. will lead him around to the green flag alongside point leader Ronnie Silk to the outside. Off turn number four. The green flag is out and we're racing at Manadnock. six-time champion rides right behind him. They have broken away nicely from the rest of the pack. Good side-by-side -side action further on. You see Jake Johnson getting down to the inside of Craig Lutz as they work their way into turn number one. Johnson has the whole shot. That's a battle for eighth and ninth. Craig Lutz to the outside of the 82. Inside is the three of Jake Johnson. Now, how about the 60 car of Matt Hirschman? He started fifth, but he's running seventh right now. He lost a couple of spots in that opening start, conserving and protecting his equipment in the early going. The loudest ovation of the afternoon was for Matt Hirschman. It wasn't all positive. He certainly has drawn the emotion out of these fans here today. Whether you like them, whether you don't like them, you're making noise for Matt Hirschman, and certainly a big story after last season's Duel of the Dog and uh, following 
falling short just a little bit after contact with lap traffic. Back to the battle for the lead. Doug Kobe being pretty aggressive here in the early couple of laps. He was able to get by Ron so close to the back bumper of Justin Bonsignor. Now, he was one of the first. You see the bumps that they came off turn number four with those speed humps. Looks like Kobe's not afraid to go on there and see if he can get that car to turn off turn four. Yeah, I wonder how much of a, a good long-term plan that is to be aggressive this early. You know, we talk about brakes. They do have 200 laps. If this race were, say, 400 laps, that might be a bigger issue. But they are really running aggressive here early on. Now, Kobe's going to look a little bit high at the entrance of the turn. And he wasn't able to turn underneath Justin Bonson. You are there searching around. We've got one car to 26 up and off the pace in turns one and two. He's rolling once again, and we'll stay under the green flag, but the leader is back in turn three. It's very early in the season, but still to have a tie in the points lead after two races with Ron Silk and Austin Beers, currently neck and neck, both with one win apiece. Silk currently running second, but a good battle for the lead. Turn number four. Doug Kobe bustles his way underneath the 51 of Justin Bonsignora takes over the race lead here, 13 laps in. Kobe to the point. Now let's see if he can gap Justin Bonsignor just a little bit. Now, Ronnie Silk saw that move by Kobe. Look at him enter in a little bit higher in turn three. Ronnie Silk, former champion in the first couple of races of this year. I have seen him make moves that I haven't seen him make in years. Just very aggressive. A lot of speed in that race car, but some bold moves and veteran moves, too. Cautiously aggressive, and they paid off time after time watching him in practice. He was the fastest in final practice here this afternoon and certainly running strong here in the top three. Maybe looking for the race to come to him after 15 laps thus far. You look at the back half of the top five. You've got a couple of other cars coming into frame. Among them is Eric Goodale in the 58 along with the 22 of Kyle Bonsignor. So Kyle Bonsignor and that car are looking pretty good here in the early few laps. He's picked up three positions so far to move inside the top five. Now, last season, Matt Kimball, local star, qualified on the outside of the front row. He was number two in practice this afternoon, but after a qualifying incident was regulated to his first lap, which was uh, a 15th place starting position, he has not been able to move forward. Matter of fact, he has dropped back outside of the top 20. So the local star having a tough go of it as track position is a premium here this afternoon. His goal was to try to get into the top 10 by the 100 lap mark, and he thought that if he did that, he'd have a shot, depending on how the race played out. Still watching this great battle between Justin Bonsignor and Ronnie Silk. The top five have been able to open up the gap from seventh on back. That's where the 60 car lives for uh, Matt Hirschman. Here's a battle we were talking about just a moment ago. Sammy Ramu working the inside lane right behind these cars, which is the 79 of John McKennedy, last year's champion, and Jake Johnson. McKennedy's done a nice job so far today. This will put him inside the top ten if he can make the pass on Johnson. Ooh, they nearly rubbed bars that time down the front straightaway. Johnson hung out just a little bit, and Ramu moves down to the inside, coming off a fourth-place run in the inaugural Duel of the Dog in 2022. Still looking strong on the inside, and Jake Johnson just looking for a little room to race down low, but nobody's having anything of it right now. Jake Johnson's been really impressive in his uh, few modified starts. He'll be in this car all year except for five races where they'll have other drivers in the car. Brian Narducci ran it at Richmond the last time out. But uh, that three car is really good with super late model races, and he's good on the long run. And modifies is coming natural to him as well. Uh, a testament to uh, not only Jake Johnson, but the uh, the old Blue 3 team. It seems like no matter who they put in that car, it's going to be a contender. To your point, Brian Arducci, I believe he was rookie of the race in Richmond uh, a couple of weeks back. And now there goes Johnson. Again, not afraid to push that button, too. Goes down low. It's not like he's rooting anybody out of the way, too. He's got racing room and not afraid to put that race car where it needs to be. That was Melissa Fightfield who was off the pace to the inside of the front straightaway, rejoined it. We stay under the green flag now 26 laps into the duel of the dog 200 great action deeper in the field and you know this is a tight racetrack it's a quarter mile racetrack but not both ends are the same turns one and two they're banking down at that end slightly different it's 18 degrees 16 degrees of banking off turns three and four and it's a little bit flatter coming off turn four so the drivers have to compromise where they want their car to be better and when you put 29 of these machines on a quarter mile racetrack many times and now getting strung out a little bit there is not a lot of room for error at all and uh, plenty of action plenty of uh, good side-by-side -side racing you saw mckennedy go down to the inside of lutz and take that position on the front straightaway that was a pretty powerful move there to put him into the ninth position he worked up off turn number two made that work and mckennedy is a driver who thought that 
over the long run that their car would be quick. I had the opportunity before the race today to walk the racetrack with him and get his thoughts, and he felt that on a long run, his car would be good. The caution flag is out for the first time here today, 30 laps into the duel at the Dog 200. Tim Conley brings out the caution flag while Doug Kobe shows the way at Medadna. And it's still uh, something uh, to behold, too, as a modified fan, seeing the Mystic Missile back on the racetrack as uh, Connolly in the number four, honoring the heritage of that race car and the race team of Bob Gambarino as the uh, original owner. Uh, he has, Connolly has taken over that team. And instead of changing the paint scheme, why would you do that? On uh, NASCAR's oldest division, to continue to honor the heritage and what better way for a longtime fan to connect with a race car in an age where paint schemes can change from race to race it's really hard to identify your favorite driver uh, you think back in the old school days the car looks the same every week week in week out let's go back to the replay here uh, with car number four take a look at what happens off turn number two he's down to the bottom on those bumps and set the car sideways came around and Loop did no real contact for the four of Tim Conley, and he continues out on the racetrack. The only incident we've seen, aside from uh, Connolly's incident in turn number two, was Matt Kimball's qualifying run, where he actually cut down a left rear tire during qualifying. Looks like Connolly's, all four of his tires are still intact, so that wasn't the case there, but eerily similar uh, spins in turn number two for those two drivers. So pit road here at Manadnock Speedway is off behind turns one and two. So the drivers will come down the front straightaway as pit road opens, go back that direction, get service for their cars if they need to, and come back out onto the speedway. No tires can be changed. We talked about that in the open of the broadcast here today. But you can take the opportunity to make some adjustments. And, you know, I think Brian, uh, Justin Bonsignor alluded to it when we heard his Mayhew Tool poll winning interview. He said, you know what, the racetrack is going to be pretty simple similar when we go racing as it was when we were out in practice in the middle of the afternoon. So from a setup standpoint, it didn't give me the impression that he thinks there's going to be a lot of adjusting needed with a race car like his that's running so smooth. And there's a driver who knows what he's talking about. I mean, his stats certainly back it up, three-time champion and a, and a relatively, uh, you know, young driver for someone to stack up the amount of wins that he has in, in the relatively short amount of time and the championships too. He is in uh, the new breed of elite drivers when you throw in a, a six-time champion like Doug Kobe and former champion Ron Silk and you know you think of how deep the Wheel and Modified series has become really over the last half dozen to a dozen years a rebirth of this series and uh, it's really tough to get a top 10 you don't back into anything around here field has been given the one to go signal as we get ready to turn them loose here there'll be uh, 36 laps into the event when they take the green flag Doug Kobe on the front row. He was able to muscle the race lead away from Justin Bonsignor. 13 laps into the event. He'll start on the bottom lane of the racetrack. Bonsignor, the pole winner, up top as we are set for the green flag of the restart as they roll through turns three and four. Top the flag stand. Green is shown, and Doug Kobe, with help from Ronnie Silk behind, will get back out into the race lead. Now Silk draws alongside Montenegro, challenging for second. Inside line, the way to go. Ronnie Silk puts his left tires down. No more than that, half the race car on the inside, down on the speed bumps, so rattles himself just a little bit, but keeps the speed intact. And Ronnie Silk, no fear in turn number three. He rides position number two. Montenegro now third. Kyle Bonsignor, his cousin, running in the fourth position, and now Matt Hirschman has picked up a couple of spots on this restart. That'll move him inside the top five. Big money, Matt, and the 60 car back with the PD Motorsports machine. He has won just about everything you can win in modified racing. That's the car that passed more than any other vehicles uh, last year, or he was the guy that passed more, anybody more than anybody else last year. Uh, didn't come up with the victory, but slowly making his way towards the front. And you see him, he restarted in seventh, now up inside the top five. Uh, same with Kyle Bonsignor, too, coming off an 11th place run last year, up inside the top five, right behind his cousin off a of turn four. They're still single five. Deeper in the pack, we see the 06 of Sammy Ramey battling with uh, Tyler Ripkum. Now, Ripkum has started in the third position today. His car is backpedaled. He's running ninth right now, and if Ramey gets by him, it'll move him back into the 10th spot. At the top of your screen or near the back, there's the number six of Woody Pitcat, too. Pitcat running right around 14th or 13th. And this year, uh, that team stepping up into the Wheelan Modified Racing Series for the very first time. And uh, Stan Mertz 
uh, shared on social media today that this is a really a dream come true for him. It really is. And Woody Pitcat and Stan Burks in that six car, they won a track championship at the Thompson Speedway in Connecticut, where the tour will visit twice this year. It was in 2015. They won the Sudoku Modified Championship there. And it's kind of a reuniting of the two teams. But, you know, he wanted to come together and have the opportunity to run with Stan Burt and bring him a start in the Wheel and Modified Tour as a car owner here today. It's really cool to see. And on the inside, there's the most recent winner in the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Series. Austin Beers goes down to the inside. And what a start that Beers has had to the season. He is the co-point leader with Ron Silk. And the number six. 64 dives down to the inside, uh, running very solid in uh, group number one. 14th position right now for Austin Beers. Uh, mired back in traffic. He'll put some moves on the inside of Tyler Ripkema as they try to make it work, but he gets into the speed bumps at the bottom of turn three. We knew somebody was going to get crossed up by that, and uh, that nearly cost Austin Beers more than just that one position. No big change up in front. It continues to be Doug Kobe. He has about a three-car length advantage over Ronnie Silk. Equal distance back to Justin Bonsignor. As again, the battle continues to be mid-pack. But car number 24 down to the inside as they both go after Woody Pickhat in turn two. That is Andrew Krause in the 24. Anthony Cecily to the outside lane. Brian Roby in the 25 directly behind. Pitcap's got a lot of experience here, as does Brian Roby in that 25 machine. New Hampshire NASCAR state champion. He ran very well at the Claremont Speedway and here at Manadnock Speedway.